How much money have you made over those 2 billion views? I think around 2 million. I literally just sold a channel yesterday for 250,000. You and Mr. Beast, you've had like DM conversations on Instagram. Like he sent me a DM on this. The Minecraft guys. These dudes are richer than most of your gurus you see on Instagram. Likes don't matter on Twitter. It's just the and the I see a trend going back to info product. Noah Morris, my man. How many YouTube channels have you created in your life so far? <sighs> Probably over a hundred at this point, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you, how many views over all of them all together? Uh, I think over two billion or something like <laughs> between one and two billion or perhaps over. I, I never count them, but they're all long form. So no shorts. I've never touched shorts or right. TikTok or anything like that. How much money have you made over those two billion views? Um, well, you have to you have to understand that not all of them are monetized. So I yeah. think in the ballpark. So it, it, there's two there's multiple metrics, right? You have the views, how much are they worth, and then also the channel evaluations. Because the channels, like I literally just sold the channel yesterday for two hundred fifty thousand. Um, but the the views itself, I think around two million or something like that. Damn. Yeah. And yeah. then on top of that, the channels that you sold. Yeah, and then you have to. I'm setting a bunch of channels right now, actually, because there's there's like a bit of a shift going on on YouTube, because there's so many people starting YouTube channels now, because it's it, it it's such a gold mine. Like it was quite under under tapped in the uh, last few years, but now everyone's kind of discovering like long form is the way to go, because mm. you know everyone's been going hard on short form, short form, short yeah. form, and people are kind of tiring out of short form and it's going you're seeing the shift into ultra long form like podcasts like we're doing yeah and that's becoming more entertaining and youtube is also overtaking tv as well so mm. that's why you have you kind of have to shift with the market because you're gonna get left behind otherwise so you're saying that the last couple of years youtube was still underrated and now it's really starting to blow up with new channels yeah, yeah, you would actually be surprised that the growth has, hasn't slowed down at all. Like, you Damn. would think a platform like YouTube has kind of capped out at the amount of creators, but you only see that the uh, amount of creators um, joining YouTube itself, or TikTok, uh, same thing. Like, there's more and more people are joining to become a creator, right? It's mm. easier, there's a lower mm. barrier to entry, mm. so more and more people are coming into the market. So that also means that that skill ceiling you know, keeps going up, up, up. You, you see that, for example, especially at the top of YouTube with Mr. Beast or, you know, any of those, you know, bigger mainstream creators where that production value goes up and up. And the same thing with Iman Gatsi, right? The production quality is crazy. Yeah. And you will see that that will keep going up over the, uh, over the next few months or a couple of years. So you have to keep shifting essentially because mm -hmm. otherwise you're just going to get left in the dust because the stuff you wa watched perhaps 10 years ago, it's not relevant anymore. Like Smosh and what uh, all those out there. Um, Whew. Old YouTubers, right? I, I, I can tell we were like 30 seconds in and you're already on fire. Okay, so over 100 channels created, over 2 billion views, over 2 million just in views generated and that doesn't even count in the consulting, the selling of the channels. And how old are you? I'm 20 and I'm turning 21 in April uh, of this year. Damn. Um, all right. That, that is uh, one hell of a career, man. Yeah. Yeah. How, yeah. how, how long have you been into YouTube? Like if you, there, there's probably has been a moment for you in your teenage years where you're like, okay, YouTube is the thing that I want to double down on. When was that? Oh, it was, uh, that's actually a funny story. Cause I was, um, the, okay. So there was a time where I was working as a video editor. And uh, eventually I got hired by this company. It was, it's called Valnet and it's this massive content farm mm -hmm. and they're based out of Canada and mm -hmm. they own uh, the richest and uh, there's these really, really big, um, you know, faceless YouTube channels that they run. And um, I was working for them as an editor uh, when I was 14 or something like that. And I was earning like $150 a video, which is great when you're 14, like 150 bucks hell a video. Yeah. yeah, that's hella good. Like I was hell spending yeah. that on candy and games and shit. So <laughs> that was good, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then eventually I was like, shit, like they're making money off these views, right? So I started getting into the space and I started building my own channels. I think around 16, 17, I was doing like 10, $15,000 a month with these faceless YouTube channels. And perhaps you wanna, pull up like a faces Hell YouTube yeah. channel, um, search up Magnate Media, maybe you know it. Magnate, like this? Yeah, and then uh, Media. All right. Yeah, so channels like uh, channels like these, which is like, these are business documentaries yeah. specifically. Yeah. Um, so it covers like McDonald's and Bitcoin billionaires. Ah, yeah, yeah. But you can do it in every single niche. You can do it for, you know, sports. Um, you can do it for, um, you know, you know other business models like SMMA, you have faces channels or trading, you have faces channels. So yeah. basically any normal, you can replace normal creators with faces channels in that way. How do you, so uh, I've, you know, I think you're the first person that I followed on uh, Twitter when I got on like a couple, yeah. two, two, three months ago or something. 
how exactly do these faceless YouTube channels work? Because that's your expertise. Yeah, right? yeah, right. That that's really what I'm good at. Um, the whole idea behind the business model is, and that's what you have to be really good at, is two two aspects, which is you have to be really good at understanding market dynamics. Yeah, it's truly something where you have to understand, okay, where am I positioning myself in the market? And then two is recognizing patterns. So it's not really, when you're a normal creator, right? You're, or a YouTuber or vlogger, whatever, you just take out your camera and you say whatever you want to the camera and you don't do any research, you just upload it to YouTube, whatever. Yeah. Right? But this is really a strategy game. It's like chess. Yeah. So it's like, I, I always compare it, especially on Twitter, I compare it to trading. Yeah. So it's like I remember I saw that ultra long thread yeah, that you yeah, had yeah, on yeah, Twitter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like you're you're trying to spot opportunities in the market. So usually, like very in a very put in a very simple way, there's much more to it. But you're trying to find those niches where you know the demand is very very high and then the supply is very low. So let's say there's like millions of viewers that want to watch a certain piece of content. But there's only like two or three guys making content around that. Yeah, and then yeah. once I find that, and there's ways to find that. Um, you go in and you crush the competition essentially you, like you come in with better quality um, you're you upload more longer videos stuff like that and then you can take over that entire niche essentially yeah so that that's basically the whole business model is you kind of gain the system by you know um, trying to be the first one or having that first movers advantage yeah. in the market uh, yeah okay so that so that is I can see how that is the parallel to you know stock trading but what i was really curious about is like what does the work process look like on one of these faceless channels so you basically i guess the first thing is you come up title thumbnail then you write a script and then you hire an editor who just slaps b like who, who's the voice behind it you just hire a yeah, voice you actor? just hire you have fiverr and upwork you just get a guy off there and you hire him to uh do the voice acting for these channels so this so ah. this is not my channel my channel actually let's so have a look at one of yours yeah so um i own one of the uh, a big ufc channel called fight focus which i have been um uh, not active for for the longest time but it, it shows a very interesting pattern so oh, nice. these videos cost me nothing to create like 80 bucks a video okay and walk me through it 80 bucks how 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 does how does the how do the costs so, accumulate here yeah so usually um so these videos are very cheap to create why because um these are like old videos just put together like i just slam them together in in the end of december or like december november you have higher ad rates right because everyone's spending for the ah, christmas holidays yeah, yeah. so those ad rates like triple sometimes <laughs> so you just want to start putting out very long content because it uh, ups your ad rates as well mm -hmm. so i'm just smashing a bunch of uh, these older videos together and that does very well because um, the youtube algorithm is currently overcompensating for these longer videos. So actually I ah. haven't uploaded on this channel for six months and I saw that longer video pattern. So if you go <clears> to- <throat> What about this 14 hours ago here? Was that you? Yeah, that was me. It's, just, it's all automated. Like I don't do anything. <laughs> uh, this is all uh, done by, it's run by a channel manager. Mm -hmm. So he coordinates with the uh, uh, script writer, the video editor, the voiceover, uh, voiceover, and they just work together. And, and then at the end he uploads the video to YouTube. But the idea is still from you or you got a guy who makes the ideas and the thumbnails and all um, For this channel, I don't do the ideas anymore mm -hmm. um, because it, yeah, it just runs passively. I can basically upload anything on it and it does decently well. Mm -hmm. And, um, but for some channels, especially in the starting phase, you're you're really trying to strategize um, because you know if a channel hasn't taken off yet, it's harder to gain that traction. So you yeah, really have to start yeah. thinking about your strategy. All right, yeah. It's like with any business, right? Like at the start, you're like a startup founder. And you're working twenty, you know, twenty hours a day, and you're yeah, nose barely yeah. any sleep. But then uh, once the business starts scaling and you have a bunch of these people helping you out, you know, it, it starts uh, going down to you know eight hours a day or something like that mm. or five. So it's the same for these channels. And then eventually, if you do it correctly, you can completely outsource these channels. So th this channel takes me maybe 10 minutes a week or something. Ah, like nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was so funny because um, a couple, I think almost a year ago or so, we uh, we are on a Zoom call together and you know you give us some tips about our YouTube. And then you see my homepage and you're like, oh, that's one of my channels. Uh, you had back then you were amongst the first ones that had, um, that really dominated the Formula One oh, niche. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, that channel was called F1 Sports. It's now not anymore. Um, we ha we got hit with a demonetization from oh, YouTube. Oh, what? Yeah, because we, we, it was, um, the policy changed recently. So they were, um, you have to sort by channels. Yeah, the policy changed recently where they really don't like these compilation channels anymore. Ah, so, no shit. So um, we had to delete like 90% of the videos on the channel. You should be able to, 
No, no, no. You should be able to find it if you go. It should be a yellow logo. Let's see. I'll just type in sports. Let me see if I can find it on my phone. Maybe it's completely. Maybe you don't even notice that. Yeah, it's gone. No, <laughs> I have to see if it's still in my YouTube studio in the first place. This no, that's not that one. Yeah, yeah, but I remember it was so crazy and like half the freaking videos that I watched. This one here. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. That's that one. No, it's two point No, no, it's yeah, gone. I don't know. I don't know where. It yeah, is. you don't even know. It. So half <laughs> yeah. the videos that I watched were like from you, and I'm like, damn it! <laughs> well, yeah, what's going on? It's yeah, really yeah. good. But a lot of people, like, um, like you have to understand, at the top of of this industry, there's like I think thirty of us, and yeah. we run like entire niches, like gossip, sport, compilations, yeah. uh, history, documentaries. Those are all run by like thirty guys. Like, ah, it's no just way. it's like a it's like a Russian oligarch yeah. meeting at the top. Like, it's seriously like that. And they're all in Dubai and there's like a few in Malta. And um, yeah, they, they run like a big chunk of YouTube. Like there's also one company in Vietnam that does all these children channels and they're doing like six, seven million a month Damn. as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's wild. Wild. It's a whole world that, I, you know, I come from it. I come to it from a, uh, you know, from a, from a personal brand standpoint, cause I've always leveraged YouTube, even with my first online coaching business. And it was just talking head videos, you know, me yeah, yeah, yeah. talking ahead, um, uh, talking about certain, you know, concepts in dating and personal development. And now we're doing the same with the business and the freedom aspect. And then, and then all of a sudden there's this whole world of, like you said, it's like anonymous faceless YouTube channels. And it's, I find it so cool that it's basically, as, as far as I understood, your work process is, you know, you find a niche that you want to populate, then you come up with thumbnails, titles, then you probably have a bunch of really good people that are your script writers. Yeah, you yeah. tell them, hey, write a script about this, this, this. I guess then they send you first drafts, you fix the script if necessary, um, you send it over to your voice actor of choice they record it and then you send it over to an editor who populates it with b-roll right is yep. that is that how yeah, i get yeah, it yeah right? that that's correct and then eventually it just gets uploaded to the, the channel yeah. epic and uh so you did the the formula one niche you crushed it in there and then that niche is now oversaturated or what yeah what's right the so there? what starts happening and th and this is the real problem so this is also one of the reasons i'm starting to sell some of these channels because hmm. Um, because it's now, you should actually go to Google Trends and search up the term faceless channels as a joke. Like, and then, um, let's have a look. So go, go to Google Trends. Wait, I'll do international, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you do international. What do I change uh, over here? Where do I change the international? Uh, what what happened there? there? With the, it used to be so much nicer. There in that tab, and then it should be at the top, I think. That's what I just tried. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> just search. Here's what I do. I'll right. do here fa face because uh, I think you can change because the damn UI changed again. No, it's, it's channels. <laughs> <laughs> As happens when you type and speak at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, then, and then here you go, not Germany but worldwide. worldwide. Yeah. There we and go. then for the past five years, something like that. And then go for and then go on YouTube. It shows it better on YouTube. But yeah, you see, you see the same. We'll check here. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, here, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube search. Oh, damn. So it went. Uh, oh. Yeah. Th yeah. This is what started happening over 2023. Yeah. Uh, you can see Blew basically up. it was nothing before, and now everyone is talking about it. And I'm doing the same thing. But what I do with YouTube, uh, YouTube channels, like when I see this trend coming into the market, you also have to re and it's with any business. It's like that. You have to react to the macro trends as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like. Obviously, I'm reacting with my cha individual channels to, you know, changes in a niche. You're like, perhaps there's an MMA event coming up, and I'm like, oh, I capitalize on that. But now you see the surge in, you know, the entire industry. So what yeah. do you do then, right? Hmm. Well, you have to start thinking three, four steps ahead, because otherwise you're going to get crushed by all these new guys coming into, yeah. into the space. So what I think is, okay, two things. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of beginners. So you want to try to create a moat between yourself and the beginner. So I, I started looking at my channel and I was like, okay, these videos aren't that hard to create. Like they worked for the last couple of years, but that the, there was no competition. Yeah, yeah. So it's super easy for me to just do my thing, but now there's competition all of a sudden. So what I have to do is I have to sell those low effort channels mm. and I have to do something that no one else can. Stuff like 3D animation, which is like quite expensive to do. That's like 
300 to 600 dollars a minute of video mm. and then to the animation everything that other people can do or very complicated topics like videos on math or you know mm. or engineering or something mm. like that and that way you separate yourself from you know those beginners entering the space yeah and that's an important thing i think t for a lot of business guys that they kind of like get comfortable in yeah. whatever they're yes. doing and then all of a sudden you know you have this market shift which you, you probably had in coaching as well yeah, right? like all of a sudden there's a 100%. shit ton of coaches yeah and then you have to start thinking okay, how am i going to be two three steps ahead because you have that advantage because you were in the market before this happened yeah so it's the same thing here yeah what i can see especially with coaching is like we, we used to call it like sunshine weather mm -hmm. so you know in around 2000 18 19 when we started it was super easy with very little effort to really crush it like there was a lot of people that quote unquote didn't deserve to make 10 20k a month but they did mm -hmm. and um what happens though now is like the money in the overall niche the overall industry is way more than ever before yeah. it keeps blowing up more and more and more because more people want to be coached online but the distribution becomes less even, yep. meaning because it's more difficult to stand out, it's not as easy for everyone, but the amount of money for the top 60%, 50%, 40% is unevenly higher. Yep. And that's also why it's, it's really important that, you know, if you want to become a coach in the online space, that you do it properly and that you really commit to it. And this is also something, you know, just as like a little side note that we have been pivoting over over the last couple months from this idea of like, yeah, anybody can become a coach. Oh, it's so easy that we actually in our marketing, we're like, hey, listen, like you got to commit to this. Like yeah, if yeah. you're only doing this uh, because you want to half-ass it, go do something else. You yeah, know, yeah, go yeah, do yeah, crypto yeah. trading or something like that. This is but the same thing, this exact same pattern we experience yeah. here. Like I say, I like, I, I preach it everywhere. Like in every podcast I say, the YouTube is not easy. It's hard. It's like, you know how many people probably around you as an individual, they have started to make it, you know, they tried making a YouTube channel and they all fail. Yeah, right? It's yeah. super, super hard. Yeah. So you shouldn't go into this expecting you're going to be successful in three months. It's going to yeah. take, it's a skill, you know, you have to understand thumbnail psychology and you have to understand video editing and retention and all these different types of things. It takes a year minimum Hell to, yeah. Yeah. to get decently good at it. I, j I, j I just had a... Uh, a little like uh, a little sentence that I came up with earlier when I had leg day at the gym and that was basically something like you either commit to something long term and realize that it's going to be hard or you go with the easy sounding thing and get scammed. Yeah, right. Like yeah, that's yeah, basically yeah, yeah. like if it sounds super easy, it's basically halfway towards being scammed that like 90 like the 99 percent and and, ag and again like i think this is great because it just cuts out all the half assers yeah. and i'd rather work with you know uh 50 clients a month that absolutely take it seriously than 200 clients a month and i have to drag them across the finish line because i did that like yeah. we used to drag people across the finish line we would literally do like half the work for them to get them to 10 20k a month um but I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. And nowadays I work with people that are way more committed. They just take every piece of advice I give them and they turn it into gold. And it's much more easy for me to work with those people. So uh, yeah, we're pivoting more and more towards people that are very serious and they actually want to build a long-term business that lasts a lifetime that is legitimate as opposed to people who just want to build a side hustle or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the difference. It, it, it's not a side hustle anymore. Yeah, like, yeah. There are, like, there's barely any side hustles because everyone wants to do a side hustle. So what yeah. happens is because everyone wants to do a side hustle, all of a sudden you have to be so good, it becomes a full-time job, right? Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah, that's the issue. But I think... I think going into, you know, 2024, it's so, so important you commit to one thing. I think that's the Amen. biggest lesson I've learned. Like I was like you, I think I spoke to you about this. I was doing so many things at the yeah, same time. I like remember. you don't want to, I have a job servicing company, which is like job shipping, but you're selling a service. Which it, it, I still have it, but I completely outsourced it. Like I, I li eliminated it. Yeah. And then I was I was doing consulting. I you know I had my personal brand, and then I had my own YouTube channels, and I, I have a bunch of other uh, stuff next to it. And then I just dropped like eighty percent of yeah. it. I was Get like, okay, I'm I'm just gonna focus on the one thing I'm good at, uh, good at, which is just growing YouTube channels and like educating others about it, right? Yeah. And. And that's just skyrocketed my productivity and and like also the amount of profit I made like hundred percent. That was you got to choose what you what, where you have the highest leverage in. Yeah, yeah. Where because if you do now drop if a guy like you who clearly has the damn expertise here, I mean you could ramble here for hours, which we are. <laughs> uh, um, 
and then you just do a random drop shipping thing, it that's not going to be your primary, secondary, or even tertiary skill. Yeah. It's just something that is going to take away from your thing that you have the most leverage on. Yeah. Because I, you said it yourself. I mean, if you, if I give you twenty minutes in a room with Wi-Fi and a laptop, you're probably going to create an epic YouTube video yeah, that yeah. is that is the that has a higher chance of going viral and making you money as opposed to twenty minutes you'd spend on a drop shipping uh, site project. You know. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's so important that and the the issue is I didn't even realize it. Like I felt when when I was in that phase of doing like everything at the same time. Because once you start making money online, it's like. There's so much, so much fucking opportunity yeah. everywhere. Yeah. You're like, oh shit, there's so much money there, and there's SaaS, and there's drop shipping, and what and whatnot. But in the end, I, I you meet people, like I meet people in Dubai and Singapore and what wherever, and then I just listen to them, and they're just good at one thing, like one yeah. very specific thing. Mm. I'm like, oh damn, like I, I just it like this the switch went off like last year somewhere in, in the summer. I was like, shit, I gotta drop everything and just focus on what I'm good at, you know. And it's very, especially for me, like I, I think I have quite a severe case of ADHD or something like that. <laughs> and uh, like I have also severe shiny objects in like the oh, worst it, case. it goes along with ADHD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like the worst. Uh, and I, like I would on a Sunday evening, I would be starting a new business all of a mm-hmm. sudden, you know, it, it, it's that bad. So, and by just trying to force yourself to eliminate, like have someone else hold you accountable, like a business partner or whatever, like focus on that, that will then x your business easily. So it's actually interesting that you say you have a little bit of ADHD, shiny object syndrome, plus you're relatively young. So, you know, there's, there's, there's certain aspects of your character that aren't fully developed yet. Yeah. How, how do you reconcile that? How are you able to focus on this one thing? What, what are the kind of habits that you've, that you've built here? Well, for me, it's like, um, it's like working without thinking. Like I start, like it, you create habits for yourself, right? Mm. And, and that's the most important part for me. When I wake up, I try to get out of bed. Just the first thing I do is drink a glass of water. And then, the, and then I start looking at my message. I don't reply. I just analyze, okay, what, what went on when I was sleeping, right? Nice. How my channel's doing, how, how were the sales on, you know, my software and what is Twitter looking like? And then I, st- and then obviously I prioritize my tasks for the day. So I try to make uh, like a structure where I like I check, I analyze data. I then make, okay, what's the priority? What, what do I have to focus on? And then after you just start working, you know, you yeah. do work. And then at the end of the day, I try to do my meetings. Um, but yeah, I, I, that's how I try to structure it, but it is quite difficult. Like, I, I think that's the biggest struggle I have, uh, is trying to work in a structured way. Cause I'm constantly traveling, you know, I've, I've been, um, like just in this past month, I've been in the Netherlands, Germany, Dubai, Singapore, yeah. Bali, and it's super hectic, hectic when you're traveling. Um, so it, you have to kind of, uh, also be able to work on the go. Like you, you say that a lot of times as well, but 90% of the work I do is just on my phone. On the phone. Yeah. 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 It, just, so it's really important to try and shift the work you have to do to just text, me- uh, like messaging people. If you can do that, that will like, that will help your business a ton as well. Like yeah. that's like this, the rule of thumb is try to be able to do anything like editing a photo or editing a video, but just sending a message yeah, yeah. that's it. that should be the goal to just be do uh do anything by just sending a message yeah especially with voice messages like i completely stopped typing as much as i can because <laughs> i'm like it's so slow and clunky with the thumbs on the phone yeah. like the, the like really like a, the, the biggest productivity hack especially nowadays where traveling is so damn accessible i used to think like oh i need my laptop for this mm. i need oh i don't have my laptop i'll do it later when i'm at my laptop and then you know sometimes you just force yourself to just do everything on the phone mm. like you open loom videos on the phone I look at Excel sheets of my clients on the phone. I have all my meetings on the phone sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. when I'm traveling. And I'm just like, okay, damn, I don't even need a damn laptop. Yeah, yeah. It just feels like you need it, but ultimately you actually don't. And uh, I mean, you know, last year, I, I said this before too, is like in 2023, I, I traveled more, I worked more, I chilled more, yeah. I had more time for myself and all that just because I was smarter about how I did it and it was more intentful yeah. with how I did things. And I mean, you've been around like crazy. And that's also cool. Like we're here in Munich right now at the at the Kempinski, and we're shooting this this podcast. And you're gonna fly to Dubai tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. tomorrow morning. Yeah, <laughs> like right after this. We were on, like we happen to be on the same continent. And I remember because you and I talked like months ago, and I'm like, hey, when are you back in Europe? Let's do a podcast. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, oh, I'm in Singapore right now or Australia. I can't even remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and now you know I'm in Austria. You're in Munich. It was only a three hour drive. So I'm like, cool, let's do yeah, it. Because yeah, yeah. uh, you never know. <clears throat> and then I also have um. 
I have uh, uh, Phil Johansson, aka Hustle Phil, on. Mm-hmm. He's also a, a guy from the Netherlands, I think. The ne- no, Denmark. Sorry, I oh, keep yeah, mixing yeah. those up. And he also lives in Dubai, and he flies in uh, to Vienna just to do podcast with me. And and it's always so cool because, you know, like, damn, my grandma is ninety nine years old now, and she traveled the world back then. Yeah. Like yeah. At, in like nineteen sixty something, <laughs> right. and uh, and it was difficult and it sucked. Like, imagine you fly to Singapore. There was no TV, no nothing. You just yeah. stare at the guy in front yeah. of you. <clears throat> and nowadays, it's like you're you're in the. I mean, I remember I was streaming Formula One in the first class in the on the flight to Dubai. Yeah, yeah. I was watching the live Formula One thingy. Yeah. But also, like the amount of work I can get done on an airplane trip is yeah. insane. It's, it's insane because so it's like a it's like a focus chamber for me. Like, yeah. I, I yeah, can't amen. do anything else. Like most of the time on on some Emirates flights, you can't. Uh, the internet is not even good enough to yeah. stream video, <laughs> so you can't even go on TikTok or YouTube to yeah. watch anything. So I just. I just sit there and I'm just like brainstorming things and it gives you time to think about problems yeah. and solve them. And that's just super important because um, especially with the uh, startup I started this year, it's like I'm constantly trying to solve problems because YouTube is mainly automated. Like I have to, for YouTube, I usually have to sit down, especially when starting new channels. Mm-hmm. I have to do my research on my laptop and have a bunch of Chrome extensions and yeah, yeah. And metrics I look at. And then on the phone, it's a little bit difficult. But for my, uh, for my startup, I can do most of it on my phone because I can just literally... Uh, look at this, uh, the project and go, okay, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, and then b- write it down in a Trello or whatever, you know, you know, on a whiteboard. And that's so great about it. Um, I, also, I also think that, um, to be honest, traveling on an airplane and just not doing anything, and that, uh, I really, really struggle with that. And letting <laughs> yourself not do anything yeah. for just all, uh, it, only 30 minutes can give you like crazy ideas. That's mm. why you also generate good ideas under the shower, right? Because 100%. you give your time, uh, your brain time to like detox from all yep. the stimuli you get throughout the day. And that's that's why you come up with good ideas. So that's why I also like the airplane, right? So, Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Shout out to Emirates. And then, <laughs> you, and then you just have them bring you coffee nonstop. And for me, coffee has this crazy effect. I just get like, actually what I have, because you, you talked about earlier about morning routines. My morning routine is get up, water, weigh myself, put in the tracking sheet for my fitness uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. mentor from the day before. And then um, I already get to work. I hit the treadmill desk. I work a little bit. And then I have breakfast steak with eggs. Yeah, yeah. And then it literally says on my Trello, twe- uh, coffee plus Twitter hustle. <laughs> yeah. So no, once, the, once the coffee hits me, I'm just like, let's go. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I have to say, bro, Twitter after like giving yourself time to think it's the best thing the ever. Best thing, it's best thing ever. I mean, like I sometimes I like I sit somewhere. I don't know. It can be anywhere. Like I sit waiting for a taxi or some some shit yeah. like that. I'm just sitting there yeah, waiting for something or someone, and I just there's like this tweet tweet idea that gets through my head, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna write this, and I just take screenshots of YouTube analytics or like a yeah. YouTube channel. I post it on Twitter, and boom. 3,000, 4,000 euros in sales like that. Like I just make 4,000 euros sitting on a, on a park bench or something like that. And that's great about it's Twitter. It's the best thing ever. It's... Yeah, because it's so quick. Like I can just like whip up my phone and like write something and boom, there's boom. sales. Yeah, yeah. No sales funnels, nothing. Like yeah. you just write your thoughts and it was valuable to someone. And they were like, oh shit, I got to know more. You know, I got to uh, see his product or whatever he's selling. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. and that's, the, that's the cool thing is like, and, and we'll probably talk about Twitter uh, yeah, yeah. much more in this podcast too but like what i really like is like you always post some sort of stats you know i i taught this to my beginner clients yesterday in a group life call where i said show don't tell yeah right yeah, yeah. and and you all like when we're just scrolling through your twitter here it's always like okay that's us right now <laughs> <laughs> that's funny let's go but it's always like hey here's some stats of this and why this works so well here's some stats of this and yeah. why this works so well it's like almost every post you're showing not telling and that's really freaking cool yeah, yeah, yeah. um what is that startup that you said you're you're working on? Yeah, so we basically, you know, how you have in the trading, like stock trading, you, they have all these indicators, right? Like they try to find these opportunities in the market. It's the same thing for YouTube. So we oh. we build. What's a, it called? Uh, it's it, it's called nextlab.io. You can you can put it up. It's, We're not getting paid for this. No. I'm just actually curious. It, um, it's uh, the ad you can click on as well. It's it brings you. To I'm just gonna ad. type in next. What Lev. was it called? Nextlab.io. Yeah. Hell yeah! Let's have a look. 
There you so go. this I is basically it, like a like a like a analyzing tool for YouTube yeah, trends correct. and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. All right, interesting. So um, I hope the internet works. Yeah, oh, <laughs> I was yeah, like, yeah. what's your server? Why is it so slow? Damn it! <laughs> no, there you go. Yeah. So next level is just um, it, it allows you to filter through all the YouTube channels on yeah. the platform. So the issue is like when you try to find these opportunities, they're trying to find a very specific type of channel and YouTube only, you know, when you search something on YouTube, you can only search by like last month, but yeah. this allows you to, you know, uh, do subscriber count and how much revenue they uh, generated. It's like um, product hunt for Shopify. Oh, you know, it's like yeah, that yeah. product hunt for Shopify, but then for YouTube channels, that's Damn. basically uh, what it does. So uh, this has been the most significant learning opportunity I've ever had. So you built this or what? Yeah, we built this from from scratch. Um, who is we? Uh, me and then my dev team. Like, okay. Uh, and uh, we built this from scratch. We we started last year, and I think we've done like oh like over six hundred k in uh, revenue now. Nice. Which is like which for a startup like a SaaS startup that's like zero point zero one yeah, yeah, percent or something. Of is, is it one time or do you guys have a subscription uh, behind we, it or how does it go? That's actually an interesting one. So we had. So for me, it was about focus for the last six months. And what was happening with these subscription models is like people were like, oh, can I get a trial or can I get this? Uh, uh, and mm. like with subscription models, it's like, oh yeah, I canceled, but the payment went through anyway. And now all of a sudden there's headache at the customer support. Yeah. And I was like, okay, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to just switch that stuff to lifetime and that's there's no headache after that people buy it once yeah they 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 can't complain because they have lifetime subscription for now and it just allows me to focus on uh, making the tool better and, and it also mm. engages your customers more in terms of okay they want the tool to be better so mm. um so they'll give me more, more suggestions and stuff like that and, then, and they'll be more engaged with the product because they don't have to actively pay for it yeah anymore. yeah so that's interesting and it also obviously raises capital for you to you know reinvest into the tool itself and um but SaaS is SaaS is such a such a cool business model because the um the multiplier you get when selling a SaaS oh, company yeah. is crazy yeah you have very little expenses because yeah. you, you know the, the the system itself is basically the delivery yep. okay so that's interesting so that's what you're doing there and um you clearly probably using it yourself every time you're coming up with new channel ideas yeah. what uh what channel are you working on right now what's the next thing um, if you can say it i don't know i want to say it but i, I can't really because um uh, well it's a funny thing so i'll show you something funny all right when i tweet something so you just scroll down for a bit um what often happens if you go down a, a little bit like you maybe a bunch <laughs> all right all right right yeah like um i sometimes talk about like specific niches um uh, like I talk about uh, this niche and it's called police body cam. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. I remember that tweet actually. Yeah, uh, it should and, be and somewhere you, here. You had it, this one here. Yeah. Uh, gathering raw materials. You know what? I'm just going to type in police. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. This I remember I remember this. I even liked it. Uh I've shown publicly seven times now. I've blown up channels in the first or second video, court cases, which I also got sucked in a complete <laughs> rabbit hole with these court case yeah, videos, yeah, yeah. man. F1 Sports, same spiel there. And then police camera, that I never got into, thank God. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so what do you want to say? Yeah, so what happens is when you share these channels, and that's why I mean, YouTube should be a little bit careful, because obviously we're, we're playing supply and demand, right? Yeah. So once I, uh, like I, I show these channels just to build my personal brand. Yeah. That's the only reason I do it because it, it has no advantage for me. Yeah, it only channels. has disadvantages. It only the only reason I do it is to build credibility. Yeah, which I I have I, I have a lot of credibility on Twitter now. Yeah, but it, it has no advantage. It only costs me money if I yeah show yeah yeah. So, but what happened after I showed a couple of these police uh, you should police body cam channels you should search up um, Doctor Insanity on Twitter or YouTube oh, YouTube, or what? YouTube. Doctor and this guy is banking. I met him um, in America at Fit Summit. This guy's banking. So uh, this is the channel he does. Damn, the thumbnails already. Yeah, so <laughs> this guy has 80 videos. Look, 80 videos on his channel. Okay. Maybe a million subscribers. Damn. And he gets crazy views. And it's easy to create these videos. It's super easy. Yeah. So, and this is just like footage of police body cam in America. Where, where does he, where do you get access to these footage thingies? That's what I want to know. Yeah, so um, what you have to do is you have, uh, there's two things you can do. You can either just download it from another YouTube channel. Yeah. Or um, <laughs> this is what most of them do. You submit a FOIA request or Freedom of Information Act to the sheriff office. Oh, and get the specific footage you you are after. Do you okay? Does he 
message sheriffs like, hey, do you got any footage of crazy Karens? No, yeah. Entitled? So, <laughs> or no, or yeah, is no, there you, like a database you can browse through? Or? No, there's no database, but essentially what you do is you search for articles or like specific events that describe what happened. Okay. And then afterwards you like, you do a Freedom of Information Act and there's like a process you go through with a lawyer Damn. and you can do it yourself and they request this footage and then it gets crazy views. Like this channel is probably making above a hundred grand a month, like more. Shaka laka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. These, these channels are banking. Like, so you met the guy? Yeah, I met him. I met him. What, what is he like? A forty-year-old? No, no, he's like, yeah, he's like, I think he's seventeen or something. Like oh, he's seventeen. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. He might be watching, but like, I think he's young. He's my age. Like these Jesus guys are Christ. young. There's like a couple of dudes, and the worst of them are the Minecraft guys. Oh, I they heard don't that. Give a sh they don't give a shit about the content they make. Okay. Like zero shit, but they're banking. They're making half a mil. So how do they bank if they don't give a shit about the content? Because it's it, there's no threshold. It's kids content. Like it's kids oh. content. So it gets. Um, uh, I won't name specific names because I'll get I'll get in trouble. Ah, uh, I'll name them. Just search up. Just Minecraft. search up Minecraft, and then and then you you'll see like a bunch of these like these types of creators. It's the same. It's the same. Uh, type of content but holy like, 694 thousand views one day ago yeah but these are like bigger creators but there are like smaller ones that do like role playing or some stuff but anyway i, I met them a couple of times and these guys just have like here like these types of channels which one like cash for example okay and they're making money like crazy they sell um and it, they cater this to children obviously okay. and they and they make the longer videos like half an hour long so obviously they're banking off these ads so rates. so i i have no clue I'm, i feel like such a boomer right now so it's they just what, what's going on here what is this it's like this. It's just gameplay. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like squeaky <laughs> voices, and they hire their little brother and sister to play. <laughs> but these dudes are richer than most of your gurus you see on Instagram. Damn. Like these dudes are rich. They have like uh, they have McLarens, Lambos, uh, standing in front of their house. They're crazy. Holy and, shit! And uh, like the the guys who run the kids channels, they they obviously don't. Uh, like give a singular fuck about the content they make but yeah those are the dudes that are richest on youtube they are bigger than mr beast like Damn. bigger than most of these big like they they run certain networks especially coming out of um vietnam they have these you know factories literary factories where they produce <laughs> these ty these types of videos like i'm um, um, there's like rows of people sitting there Just either playing minecraft playing or, minecraft, or they were, they're recording like satisfying videos or like asmr or oh. like like there's factories like content it's factories. like sweatshops for the digital yeah yeah era. it's literally sweatshops for youtube and they're animating these um search up my animated story on di this guy's also making crazy money yeah. yeah, I I mean I'd love that. So what is this? this what are we channel, looking at here? Um, so this is like literally old Max being taught how to use the internet by a twenty-year-old billionaire <laughs> here. Okay. So this channel, you you wouldn't think so, but which this, one? Uh, the they MSA might, previously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, it these channels might seem very weird, but the owners are filthy rich. <laughs> and it's just these like teenage <laughs> stories, but they get mad views. <laughs> And then they sell uh. they sell merchandise. <laughs> they sell they sell comic books. They sell you know oh move. of these like attractive animated women, girls with tiny waists. Yeah, it, yeah, it's like stuff like that. And they have everything. And and I want to buy the merch. Where's the merch? And like, I want to. I want to. Some buy of a these videos have it. And then like these channels are making two three million a month. Or something. How like many? That. Two, three mil. Two, three mil a month yeah. with and just some they, anime. And, and it's probably some guy in in Vietnam yes. animating this stuff. Yeah. These, these videos get produced, I think these are quite expensive to produce. Um, these are quite expensive, but you can, there's cheaper channels out there that are also making crazy amounts. I'm of so ruining my whole YouTube what? experience because it's all going to be suggested to me right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but these animations are wild. Um, Dream, I Dream, I think, well, making a... What, what is Dream? A, 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 it's a Minecraft YouTuber. Oh, I, I think you showed that guy to me, uh, didn't you? Yeah, actually, there was, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about it, but there was this exploit recently, what uh, which allowed you to see in the back end of YouTube channels. Oh. So, um, I don't remember how much it was, but it, it was, it was like yeah, a couple one million. Hour, like one two. hour video, 69 million views. Okay, okay, so one hour video, 69 million views. How much money is he making off that? Uh, let's say he probably has, on this video alone... Based on the retention, because a lot of people finish these videos to the end, probably like $20 RPM. 
can so, be higher. So what does that mean? How much in total for this Yeah, video? so twenty dollar RPM means per thousand views mm -hmm. he gets paid twenty dollars, right? Okay. So I would have to whip out my calculator. Let, let's whip out the calculator. Yeah. Um, <coughs> but yeah, so so that's what you watch, Primoz. <laughs> Instead of learning marketing, you watch this shit. Yeah. <laughs> so pro, there, there could be a good chance this video made more than a million dollars. Damn. Like just by having fun with your buddies for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's probably not even crazy cuts in there. It's probably yeah. Just... Well, there is actually. That... Okay, there is. Okay. okay. So there, there is a good video strategy behind this. So he cuts it in a way where you know it's always exciting. It keeps you like they try to hunt him down, and the, he splices the video in a way where it looks like they they're constantly nearly about to catch him. So you keep watching for an uh... hour long, thinking he, he's about to get caught. So that's what he does. What's the what's the demographic? What is the, what is the average age of the person watching this? I think around thirteen to sixteen or something okay. like that. But it, it, it used to be much older because it it was cool to watch him when he was still new. But now yeah. it's like quite young people. I believe like sixteen. I think was it then. <laughs> but yeah, these guys make good money. Yeah, they make good money. Crazy. But, and how well, who's the dream guy? How old is this guy? I think someone twenty six or something like that. Okay, so he's already one of the older, yeah, he's older old. rabbits in the house. Yeah, he might it might be younger, but there's a bunch of drama around these Minecraft guys. So I, I would let's hear it. <laughs> let's hear the drama. Well, all these like sexual assault allegations. Oh Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Noah, like, what yeah. is going on? Yeah, I don't know. But it's um it's an interesting industry. But still, like they make good money, these guys. This but, is my first time actually seeing Minecraft. So there's like freaking <laughs> Uh, you know, you know what I started going full on uh, autism mode on is uh, Subnautica. Oh yeah, similar Subnautica to this stuff, was right? Cool, bro. Dude, I uh, d over the Christmas holidays, I think I had like two days or something where I just played it all day. Like yeah, woke yeah, up, yeah, play, yeah, go yeah. to bed. Um, incredible how you get sucked into this kind of stuff, and probably Minecraft is even more uh, uh, complex than that. Oh yeah, Minecraft. I used to be, I used to be so good at Minecraft. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I used to play that every day for like four or five years. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I was addicted. All right, but uh, anyway, anyway, it's it's a fun uh, it's a fun game to play. Jesus, we got super sidetracked. I can't remember yeah. what, what was like the thing we. Oh yeah, the body cam guys. I yeah, remember so that. When, once you reveal a channel, it's dead. Uh, basically, you destroy your own success because mm -hmm. all we see you're going off um, supply and demand, right? And then you reveal it, and all of a sudden you have all these guys hyper focused on making new YouTube channels. They see this opportunity and they're like. It's like saying, okay, here's my business formula. Go ahead and copy it. And then yeah. everyone does the same thing and then give it a couple of months and the niche is that. And that's what you're seeing now. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, also like I, I, I would presume that you only share the winning niches once you're quote unquote done with it. Yeah. yeah so yeah, even yeah. if you do implement it very quickly and you know, you're looking for a quick money, money making mm -hmm. thingy, it's already, you're already in a, in a freaking red ocean. Yeah, I, I always say anyway. like when I share a niche, I'm just doing it pure as, as an example of what is possible. Yeah. But I wouldn't recommend going in after me because there's probably like 300 other dudes thinking the exact same thing as you. Yeah. So, so, but I usually share the channels that are dead or like demonetized or any, like, like when I'm not making money off them anymore, it doesn't cost me anything. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's what happens when you share this channel. So that's the big downside of it. You have to be very protective of, you know, um, what you share. And that's why everyone just always posts those analytics and never the channels itself. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all right, all right, all right. Okay, so we're looking at Twitter here. You got 7,900 posts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you got like 20,000 uh, 20, followers on Twitter. Yeah, and I got pretty, uh, got a pretty good Twitter following as well. Like uh, I get followed by Mr. Beast, Luke Balmar. I saw that. So, <laughs> you and Mr. Beast, you've had like DM conversations on Instagram or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Tell so, me about that. Well, yeah, we were. Well, it's got a long. Uh, it's a short story. Well, actually. we have time, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's two-hour podcast. So. <laughs> Um, we were at Fit Summit, which is like a YouTube event, and um, me and uh, two friends of, uh, of mine, we were sitting on a couch in the hotel lobby, we were just chatting because we just arrived, and these two black SUVs pull up, Ooh. and uh, first we see Carl come out, but I've spoken to Carl before at the, the previous event. And uh, we see Carl get out and they walk past in the lobby and then we see this, like Mr. Beast is actually way taller than you expect him to be. Oh, he is so tall, funny. bro. He is tall. He's like six feet plus. Like something. Oh, damn. Yeah, okay. Six foot five or something like that. He's tall. So um, anyway, I, he's like all covered up in a dark hoodie because everyone swarms in there. That's yeah. the problem with the YouTube events now. There's like a bunch of like creators. 
uh, like it used to be very chill, right? There's like all these big YouTubers chilling, but now it has to be separated because there's like a bunch of like fans mm. who are like also creators. Mm -hmm. And then the like Mr. Beast can't even walk around yeah. anymore. Of course not. He gets I mean, swarmed. Yeah. Like he gets swarmed. So Jimmy, uh, Jimmy walked past us, and then he sees my friend, which also owns a YouTube tool. And he sees, and he, and he turns to my friend and said, I, I also saw your YouTube tool. Like, very cool, very Sick. cool tool. So then uh, he was like, oh, wow, he saw my tool, you know, because you don't expect him to, um, to lure on Twitter. But I feel like he's a very, and that's very inspirational to me. He is very interested in everything, even if you're a million times smaller than he mm -hmm. is, right? Mm -hmm. he, he's still at the stage he is at learning new things. Like, yeah. like he sent me a DM, I'll, I'll show you. Let's have a look. He sent me a DM and that, and that really um, switched something in my mind. I was like, um, he's just interested in everything. Mm. He's trying to be the know-all of YouTube, you know? Yeah. So he sends me a DM. He says like, oh yeah, so you... I'm, I'm going to read it out if that's fine. Yeah, yeah that's right. fine. So he says, uh, if you see me here at VidSummit, come say hi. Curious what all you guys do with faceless channels. Nice. And you just say, sure. Didn't want to bother you too much, but sure, <laughs> just saw you in the lobby. So if I see you again, I'll tap on your shoulder. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's the interesting part about Jimmy is like, he's at the stage he's at, like he's the top, he's the top dog, right? Like everyone looks up to him, but he's still going uh, around on Twitter or whatever. I don't even know how he, how he found me, mm. right? He's still going around and like DMing people, asking questions and learning new things. Like, even though you think he knows everything, right? Cause he gets like a hundred million plus views a video. He's still learning new stuff. Mm. So. I think that that's a valuable lesson to learn. That. I mean, it's exactly what you said earlier of like, you cannot just rest on your laurels. You have to keep pushing. And because yeah, you yeah. said, we literally said this before. It's like uh, a lot of people, they, they become successful and then become lazy and entitled. Oh, I'm the best anyways. Yeah. And you see the people that are long-term at the top for years or even decades. Yeah. Those are the guys that have that weird humility around them yeah, where they're yeah, literally yeah, like strange, yeah. hey man like how do you do this so you know you got mr beast who's got like x x amount of followers yeah. and he's just asking someone else like, hey man uh can I ask you for advice yeah and that is that is actually something that i learned from my first mentor owen cook because i remember i was his uh, owen cook aka rsd tyler I was his like bum fuck assistant. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the guy who picked up his laundry <laughs> and I, I'm the guy who drove him around to freaking air one in LA every day. And I'm just there. I'm just like 22 year old, nobody. Yeah. And then I'm driving around Owen cook who in the dating and personality, personality, personal development niche is like the biggest guy ever, yeah, yeah, like yeah. the most legendary guy. And he sits there and he's asking me questions. He's like, so how do you do, how do you do this in a relationship? What's your thought process about this and that? And I'm just like holding the steering wheel like, oh my God, he asks for my opinion. <laughs> and you know, in the beginning, I just thought it was really cool. And maybe he does it as a favor because I'm driving him around and it's, it was an unpaid assistantship. But then yeah. I realized it's exactly what he said. Yeah. He's at the top of his game because he keeps having that humility of asking whoever the fuck, it doesn't matter because yeah, yeah. it's a piece of advice. You got to You got to, you got to soak up your lessons like a sponge from every everyone and everywhere yeah. you yeah, cannot yeah. discriminate that's the only way you stay at the top yeah it's exactly like that and even the top dogs like mr beast they do they do it and it's insane yeah like and and that's uh that's just a wild thought to me because he, he's just taking everyone's like golden egg like you think he's you, you're all um like he sent you a message you're like wow what the fuck you know yeah uh, mr beast has just sent me a message but then He's actually doing it for a selfish reason when you think more Hell about yeah. it. Yeah, he's, just, he's like, yeah, tell me your secret. Well, yeah. How are you doing this? You know, so I can, if, if there's anything valuable, I'll take it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's smart. It's like, I, game is game. That is how you say at the yeah. top, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and it's pretty cool. But yeah, look, look, to move back to Twitter. So how long did it take you to build that 22,000 followers? A year. One year. One year, one post every day. You That's only post it. once a day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sometimes shit. if I have multiple thoughts on a day, I'll just spew something out. But I was like, okay, I'm just going to commit myself. I'm uh, like, I, I didn't know it was going to grow. But okay, so I'll start from the beginning. Let's start from the beginning. Okay, so I was at Fit Summit last year. So that's always like the main event. That's like the, I don't know how to compare it even. But it's like the big YouTube event. Everyone yeah. is there. It's like, Vakken, big... it's like Vakken for the metal heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like everyone is there. And um, yeah, it, it, so it was interesting. So I was there at Fit Summit and then my friend, 
um, he had a small Twitter following, I think like three, four thousand followers. And we were walking around and all these big guys, they came up to him like, oh yeah, I follow you on Twitter. Like, oh, oh wow, I know okay. you. Like a Twitter, especially in a YouTube space, is a big thing. Everyone's on Twitter. Yeah. So all the big guys are on Twitter. Like everyone, every single creator is on Twitter. So I, I saw that, I was like, shit bro like he's getting all these valuable connections like all these big guys are hitting him up like yo you want to come out for dinner mm. and he's getting all these deals like oh maybe you should talk to him like he's searching for someone to help him out with his you know youtube strategy or whatnot i was like shit i need to get on this too you know so i was like okay i'm gonna after vid summit i'm just gonna go home and i tweet one valuable thing <laughs> each day. And that's what nice. i did and it grew like crazy it grew like crazy do you how much of that is grew from the platform itself and how much you think grew from you know you being on podcasts and stuff like that i think 60 percent was just twitter organic like 60, wow yeah, yeah. okay so you post once per day what else like wh how how what are like some tricks yes yeah, so okay. um, the reason why i'm asking is because i freaking love twitter mm -hmm. and i literally just use it as like a a, a, a ground for for me to test ideas yeah like yeah. i i have my coffee i'm at the gym and i'm like this is great thought and i just pop it out and i love it it's just yeah. it's, yeah, just it's so nice, cool. organic it's so but that's the interesting part because as we progress more through you know all these um you know product uh, like product size content where you, you have like editors yeah camera, yeah man. yeah like people kind of get tired of it like yeah. all these hyper retention edited videos exactly and exactly everyone gets tired of it so that's the nice part of twitter you can just like throw it a thought uh, thought and then it could be interesting to something else or it's, it's it the, the purest form of creation yeah because yeah. it's like there's no editing involved it's like literally just you popping out a thought yeah that's all <laughs> So, so how so how do you grow there? So yeah, Twitter and this is gonna be this is gonna be the game. Like uh, let's hear let's like hear the Twitter, Twitter crash I'm, course. I'm telling you, if you are selling a product or service or whatnot, go trust me. Do the same thing I did. Go and uh, tweet one valuable thing a day for the rest of the year, like until next January. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But trust me, it will give you a shit ton of uh, value. But also like good connections and a shit ton of money. Like yeah. you can earn you a good amount of money. So Twitter, how it works. So it's a reply game. It's all, um, who can I get to reply to my tweet, right? So what the mistake people are making, I'm not sure if you're doing this, but let, let's go to your profile. Yeah, sir. Okay, let, let, right let's uh, let's see Noah giving me some shit on my profile. Let's see. Like go, go to your profile? Yeah. And then go to your replies. I wanna see how much you're replying to people. Ooh. What you're replying to people. I, I, I mean, if someone replies to me, I reply back. That's all I can say, but I don't, of course I don't get many. Yeah, replies, so yeah. let's just let's just um, keep scrolling through it and let's see what you've been posting. So yeah, so okay, so let's see um, what you really want to do, especially in the replies, right? When you reply to someone else's post, you want to post something that gets someone else to reply again and then again and again. Mm, so mm -hmm. the more you try and get people to reply to you, the more chance they start following you. Yeah, right. And the next time you post they will reply to it. And then a friend sees it and they will reply to it. And then you engage with them and then they start replying. It's like a game of how many people can I interact with? So so, so just to interrupt you here real quick. So the people that have replied to me here, there are people that are already following me and they're basically giving their two cents on something that I posted. What you're saying is you just add people. No, no, you don't add them. It's like you're trying to say something that gets someone else to react again. Ah, okay. Yeah, All yeah. right. All right. So, um, what so there is a score so the uh, the twitter algorithm got leaked yeah and there's oh, actually right. a really big score if a if you post a tweet someone replies to it and then you reply back to that person there's a really big algorithm boost there. okay so it's it's basically um, what i try to do with my twitter especially at the start first you have to reply to everyone you see like try to give your thoughts on things or give value to, like when you see bullshit so or, you so you mean when i go on my home yeah. and i see random stuff here tim ferris i reply to him yeah you just say something like this like whatever you think this about is it. bullshit like oh homework before doing psychedelics that's exactly my down my line yeah, yeah, yeah. i'll hell yeah i'll reply to that later yeah you try to get top tweet every time so How? you try to say something so sometimes i know what some people do is they turn on notifications for a creator that uh, has a similar audience to what ah, they want to reach so and every time right they post, away you see it you reply something thoughtful or whatever you think will get the top likes and that's how you get your initial follower base that is so genius so once Ding. so once you've got that initial follower base that's where it starts to get passive so yeah okay i'm i'm uh, so I'm, I'm gonna turn notifications on for you as well man <laughs> <laughs> let's go yeah, yeah yeah so 
once you've got that initial follower base, that's where you can get um, the real growth. Because now uh, you have like a group of people following you and you can start like branching out where uh, you can tweet something like valuable, they reply and the friends see it. Um, like just have a look at my profile. Um, yeah, let's go back to Noah Morris here. I'm yeah. just I'm just turning on notifications for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <coughs> So yeah, you, you go down and, and just look at the um, the ratios of replies and likes to my, like the more replies you ah, see. Ah, so this one here. So not a lot of uh, replies and not a lot of likes. And then here's more replies and more likes. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about, okay, so basically it's a reply game. Yeah, yeah it is. Make it's as many people reply to your stuff as you can on one side. And then on the other side, reply to your favorite creators as well. So you get the top reply, yeah. which gives more eyeballs onto your profile. Yeah, yeah. but you want to try and interact within one community. Like try to like know, okay, who's my audience? Yeah. Who kind of fits that avatar? And yeah. that's the only bubble you want, kind of want to be interacting with. Genius. And um, yeah, just reply with everyone. You, you have to show up consistently. And then all of a sudden people start to follow you and reply, interact with you and DM you. And that's, and that's good. So... Um, like, for example, I reply to your post. Check your notifications now. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. There you go. Damn. Yeah. Oh, damn. All right. Yeah, Let's so go. There you go. <laughs> See? So there you go. People start following you. And uh, that's all because I replied to your post. That is so interesting. Okay. Yeah. Because so, they see your reply to my post on your profile. They then see who's this Max Torno guy. Oh, he exactly. got some cool stuff. Let me go follow. Yeah. So in, in this case, you also shout out to Oscar Savas. <laughs> Uh, uh, Ted. Oh no, that's another guy. But yeah, shout yeah. out to the new followers here. Oh, that is so sick. Yeah. So the more people you get to reply to your post, and and that's why these giveaway. Like I was saying this to you earlier. Like if you do like a, a reply with DM, and I'll send you this Notion template or something like that. That works really well on Twitter because it like triggers the algorithm. Ah. Like it's like oh everyone's replying, and then boom, it gets pushed to everyone's home feed. Like uh, and that and that's a way to grow very quickly. Um, but yeah, that's why also when there's something controversial on Twitter, that's what the whole platform is based on. I remember, yeah. When there's something controversial, everyone starts talking about it. Yeah, and that's yeah. why the replies, like it's a reply game. It's not like, oh, um, how many likes can I get? No, likes don't matter on Twitter. It's just the replies and the retention on your posts is mm. another thing. Like if you look at my threads, that's another interesting thing to look at. That's another crazy thing. You have these crazy long threads sometimes. Yeah, that's for retention. <laughs> ah. I'm milking retention there. So if you just scroll down, like there's a couple. I remember that super long one where you compared it with the uh, with day trading or something yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just where we're at here. I think it was after the. Oh uh, yeah, there, there, there. This one. one. No, the up, up, up. This one. This one here. Yeah, getting. To, yeah, this one. This is the the long post. Oh, all right. You have to pr the press on the one retweeted one. You see, I don't even know how to <laughs> can navigate the UI here. Press on the retweet. I uh, the post I retweeted. No. <laughs> oh, oh, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, right. So right. yeah, here you have to. So you retweeted your own stuff. Yeah. So it boosts the engagement again. So I don't have to write another post. I just retweet my own stuff, and then it shows up to new people again. Ah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Ah, I see. So like a month later, you retweeted it because it was yeah. one of their best posts. Yeah, yeah. And so another thing that people <laughs> this is this is called two hundred fifty thousand views. Damn. Right. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's cool because you slapped the photo on it. You always show don't tell at almost every single point that you're making. I read that. I li I was like, this is great. Yeah, like I got totally this, is, in. this is uh, audience retention. I'm milking audience retention. So I'm kind of gauging where people drop off by the views on each. And that's the nice part about it. You can kind of see where the retention, like, the, the views literally show you what people find interesting. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I yeah. learned from every slide. I'm like, okay, people found this text interesting. And I learned eventually that like p uh, videos or uh, tweets with images, they just got more views. Yeah. So me, I started yeah. pasting as much of them in, like even if they're bullshit, right? Like this is just a just random some meme. Just some dumbass meme, yeah. But it just catches your attention. So yeah. Um, yeah, that works really great, but the, the, these are very, very long and they do well, but you don't want to overwhelm your audience. Like it's a mix between like Idly, thoughts, yeah. long threads, giveaways, you, you, you kind of mix everything together. It's yeah. like a content strategy, but, um, yeah, these are great. And then another thing which would be really great to look at is the, um, the Christmas giveaway I did. Um, that, that was yeah, a couple that, days ago. Yeah, it was, couple, it was close. Well, we're at six hours ago. Mm, Gotta scroll blah, down a bit. That's December 31st, December 27th. I remember you gave your... Here, this one. This one here, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this one. So this was this was a really crazy one since I was like... Um, I was like uh, 24 hours before, like 48 hours before. I went like, 
okay, at 6 p.m. CAT, I will tweet something, and the first few people to reply, they will, you know, get a present. Damn. And I tweeted that, and within the first minute or something, there were 100 replies. That's, a, that's genius. The first, among the first people that reply, yeah, yeah, yeah. I give a present. And, and, and so Twitter also measures. So the reason I, I tested this, um, it did okay. Uh, the reason I don't think it went very far in terms of reach is because my product, right, is only limited to the amount of people who know me, mm -hmm. right? If you do something more general, it gets pushed farther, right? But here, uh, that's not the case. So that I, ha I have some tweets where it was something very simple, very broad, and that went very far. That got like a million views or something Damn. like that. Yeah. But uh, in this case, I, I gave away, you know, my soft uh, software and my course. And um, yeah, that did great as well. I, I, I did like this trick where I like the first four people who replied, they got like 99% off and the, and the four people after that, they got 70% off. So you ah. had to be fast, you know, yeah, you, yeah, you felt yeah. that pressure like, oh, if I don't buy now, those discounts codes are going to be gone. And then those discounts codes after. So it creates this pressure and we saw that everything. Sick. And we had like 60, 70 discount codes or something. Sick. So that was, it, it was when, like, I think that in an hour or something we did like twelve thousand sales like nice uh, man and then when we launched this for low ticket that's pretty good yeah and for yeah it's quite low ticket and then when we launched this product that was insane that was the probably the most insane money i've seen yeah so we how much did you make in the first we uh, we crashed our site first of all, so <laughs> it could have been a lot more but um uh, I, I was tweeting by that time for four or five months i think and I, I kind of like started teasing it, like I'm building this tool and it's going to be really exclusive and whatnot. And we, we were launching the beta and we, within one minute, we were at 70,000 in sales. That's so, really good. Within a minute. Within a and minute. And what, what's the uh, price point? If you, if you can um, say it. The price point when we launched was 799. That's really good, man. Yep. That's really good within a damn minute, man. Yeah, within a minute. It was like everyone's waiting. I was like, I, I tweeted again, like, um, hey, it's going to be at this time point. We're going to release yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we did it. And we, we also said, like, oh, yeah, there were only... I think the reason it did well, we had just one price. The, mm. We made a big mistake afterwards where we added, like, different subscription tiers and, like, different confuses things. Confuses people. It confuses people. Like, the best thing, and, and we were confused, like, ah, oh, the sales are dropping. Like, we have a better offer now. Uh, thought, uh, but yeah. it was just that beta subscription offer was just lifetime. It was just simple. Like, you buy, you get access. You get the value. Simple as it, that. Yeah, it's simple yeah. as that. And everyone's buying. And then all of a sudden, we started complicating it, and the sales that yeah all of yeah. a sudden and then we reintroduced lifetime and the sales went back up so you did you did that only through your twitter following or did it was you, only did you... twitter following before wow. any interview any podcast sick there was pure twitter that is so crazy and you know it's funny because like i kind of see a i see a trend going back to info products this mm. is semi-related to this yeah, because yeah. of course it's SaaS. But like I started with info products back in, in 2016. I made my first million with info products. We had three price points. It was uh, 497, 697, and 997, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is kind of cool. Like you, you build an audience. For me back then, it was predominantly YouTube. Yeah. I had like 100... 120,000 subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. And that was 2016 when it actually still meant. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like that was a lot. Like 100K yeah. subscribers, holy shit. And... Um, I also had this info product and then, you know, you, you hype it up for about a year. I hyped it up for a whole damn year, close yeah, to a year, yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I dropped it and it was exactly the same. Like you just see the, the sales coming Bro, in. Bro, like, bing, 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 Yeah, bing, my stripe bing, was like, bing, 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 yeah, yeah, was I was like, and I didn't even expect it. I was like, oh yeah, maybe, like I, I said to my team, I said like, I would be very happy if 20, 30 people buy it. Yeah. We sold out within a minute. That <laughs> it was is like, so <laughs> sick. It was crazy. I was like, just, I was like, there's no way a Twitter account, no one has seen my face at that point. It's Twitter just, is, that's the crazy thing. If no that's one has seen my face, it was thing. just pure credibility. I was just pure spewing <laughs> value on Twitter. And that's what got people to buy. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and that's crazy to me. And um, actually, there's a lot of guys who do coaching on Twitter and do crazy numbers. Yeah. I mean, like I said, like high ticket is still the easiest way to start because, you, you know, you only need four or five clients to pay 2K each and boom, you're making 10K. Yeah. But... I still like the info product stuff as well because yeah. it it has this thing we're launching you press the button and the and sales are coming in and then but the sexiest thing of them all is you have both you right. got the low ticket stuff just to, to to prove yourself especially in the world nowadays where it's hard to build trust 
because you know all these fake gurus in similar niches or the same niches they really ruin people they burn people yeah, yeah. and then you're someone legit like you still have to work on building trust just like oh, you I have did to here fight. on Twitter I have to fight exactly for it like I, exactly I have to prove myself every over day, and over, over again over exactly. and over again because there's so many guys who just pew bullshit like, exactly that's a really funny guy I follow <laughs> let's call <laughs> him out. champs C H E M S so. Yeah, 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 like that. Right. Yeah, Champs YouTube, there, there you go. Wait, where, where do you see yeah, that? Champs YouTube. Oh, there, there you go. All yeah, right. so this guy is like the whole mark, like everyone makes fun of him. Oh. Uh, he's like, like he, he has all these play buttons. Like, <laughs> he travels and he takes his play buttons. He, I was going to say, so who, he takes the play buttons. Who the fuck takes his play <laughs> buttons everywhere to go? He goes on planes and he takes like 20 <laughs> of these things. Like he takes them and, and he posts the weirdest. And it, uh, like, so most of these, um, in, this engagement is, I think, botted. Like he, get, he gets these oh. other pages to reply. Like these uh, big theme pages, he gets them to reply to his Twitter post. And that's where the engagement comes from. Yeah. But still, he's banking. He's doing coaching. He's doing consulting. I mean, if it, you know, so is he again? Like, I, I, I don't want to talk anyone, but is his program is coaching legit? Yeah. So we've never seen any of his channels. We okay. don't know what he what he wants. Okay. Um, there's just like the the issue with it. The the main issue with these types of guys, and and that's the hard part, is they make it seem like it's super easy. Like, yeah, um, that, and that's what we said. Like, you either commit to hard work and long lasting something that you build up for long lasting or you go for the easy sounding stuff and get scammed. Yeah. So look, look at the first tweet, for example, I like, again here, not saying this guy is a scam. I don't know him, but yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just in general, look at the first tweet. So this is the problem in a lot of industry, any coaching industry. It's, it goes like this. I run over 30 YouTube channels while working one, two hours a day on yeah. them. Here's my workflow summarized on 18. Now, this is not that bad yet, but it kind of insinuates like, oh yeah, you, you only have to work one, two hours a day. Exactly. No, exactly. it's like at the start, like, yeah, you can do one, two hours a day on them. That's re uh, realistic. Once you've done this for five years exactly right yeah, yeah so yeah. um and, and then if you scroll further and and th this there's always these guys in different niches uh, with youtube automation you can make 100k 90 days yeah sure but it's super difficult like yeah, yeah, yeah. and i try to every year um um every post i try to put, kind of put a disclaimer and add nuance because i feel like that built my personal brand that nuance because everyone is like um super harsh they're like um, they don't really show reality and everyone's kind of tired of gurus nowadays, right? Yeah, exactly. And I was, I was like super harsh, like, okay, guys, it's super hard. It's still a great business model, but it's hard, right? Yeah, you have to yeah. commit to it. Yeah. So, and, I, and people really, really appreciated that. So, exactly. It's, I would it, steal that if you're another coach and I see them, they mimic me. Uh -huh. There's other uh -huh. dudes entering the space and they, and they, um, they mix my style with this, this other dude that also does YouTube tweets and they mix our styles and they're like, and they literally put in their banner, uh, no bullshit YouTube advice, nah, and then right, it's like right. that, and they and they're like a mix between us. Yeah, yeah. So and then it's like they're they're a bit of uh, like a griftery because it's like you're not authentic, you know, you're not genuine about you're it. You're doing it because it works, yeah, as opposed to you're doing it because it's your honest stuff. Yeah, it's because you care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, yeah. I mean, just to get back to the Twitter thing, and what you what you've said so far is is, is ultra valuable. What do you think about? Um, because you say you're posting once a day. Mm -hmm. For me personally, so far, by the by the time of the recording of this podcast, I got like 200 something followers, and I don't even care. Yeah. Like I just I just started posting because I'm like, this is cool. Like I can just share my thoughts right away, um, and and I love the immediacy of it. Like I said, like again, like I'm bench pressing and I have a cool thought. And I'm like, yeah, hey, this is a cool one liner. Open Twitter app, slap it in there, Bro. close it and back. Even if you do a coaching product, like someone, you know how many DMs a day I get for people asking, like begging If you do DMs, yeah, yeah. They say like, name any amount, please Amazing. let me do a co coaching. And like, I don't even sell product, like, I don't advertise anyone. Yeah, yeah. And like, do you do coaching? That's, no, a, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Like uh, if you grow it and like you, yeah, you know how to, it's like, Twitter is like chess with words. <laughs> yeah, it's strange. It's strange. You're always like when I'm tweeting something, I'm constantly like, oh, if I say this, how will it co come across? Like, will it be strategic? You know, I'm yeah. always that's the difficult part of it sometimes about Twitter. When, once you get big, you have to understand, like, thou like if you see the impressions on my post, like thousands of people are, are reading it, and you say one wrong thing and you get like 
backlash. Flamed. He gets yeah. flamed immediately. Yeah. So you have to be very careful. But if you're good at that, then it's it's a really great platform. That's just, that's exactly one of the things that I really like. Um, what I see with a lot of coaches that are new that come in, they have good thoughts, but they don't know yet how to express it in mm. a short and precise manner. Oh yeah, that's the trick. <laughs> exactly. And with you know with Twitter, you got the 270, 280 characters or what it not what it is, and you're literally forced to shut the fuck up and yeah. put it in a really concise really nice economy of words type of yeah, tweet yeah, yeah. i mean sure you can you can do it longer now and you know there's threads and so on and so forth but i tell this to a lot of my beginner clients i'm like just create a twitter account not because at first you want to make money from it but just because it shall train you on how to keep your thoughts really precise yeah, yeah. because that exact thought process that exact skill that you're honing here can be easily translated into uh, Instagram reels, TikToks, YouTube shorts, because also there... Yeah, you have to do the same thing. If you can't get someone's attention within the first three to five seconds with your hook, it's not going to work. How do you learn to get really good at hooks without having to make a damn video every time yeah. you just slap it on Twitter? Well, I want to add to something. So, like, the what I love about Twitter is, right, when you're making a YouTube video, you have to edit, blah, blah, blah. You can practice um, making hooks on Twitter with threads. Exactly. I do that. I do that. If you read my, if you read like one of my threads, it can be any single one. You see, I do the exact strategy I will do in a YouTube video. I will do on Twitter. It's it always a sexy hook in every. Well, not on this one, thread. but if it's a thread, I will think about it. So like this one here. Yeah, this one is not really a good example. This is like the one, like the one tweet. Uh, this also not, but this like if you just go you. for a thread like that, I want to go viral, like. Like, for example, this one. Getting 250 million views on YouTube is easy. Yeah, when yeah, When you read yeah. that immediately, you're like, easy. What the fuck is he talking exactly, about? Exactly, you know? yeah. And then here's what you learn in four, four minutes, minutes of reading. reading. When I read that and I broke it down, I'm like, that's awesome. Because now you're basically breaking down the chapters. Yeah, yeah. How to never enter a saturated niche yeah. again. Oh, wow, that's my pain point. Understand yeah. why some channels yeah. don't get views anymore. Oh, I want to know because yeah, it's dramatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, think like a YouTube pro. Oh yeah, I want to think like a YouTube pro. Yeah. And then you know, uh, why the fuck should I care in the stock market? Da, 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 da. And it's all just so concise. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, I'm sure that you know, at 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 the level that you're at, your brain is already trained to think in short bursts of yeah, value, yeah, yeah. as opposed to hey, I need, I'm gonna talk about the thing, no, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. gonna, you know. And, that, and that's a, such an important skill to learn how to command someone's attention within three to five seconds. And like like we said, like you can learn that on short form videos, but you got to shoot and edit a video for each test. Well, the nice part about these threads, okay, this one took me a little bit longer, but they take me like half an hour to an hour. Exactly. It you takes, get so much faster at it every single oh, yeah. time. And like you have these, like Typefully is a, a, a thread app I use. You just screenshot like an image you're talking about like whatever result you space it in there and there's like an edit button and it just fills it with these backgrounds you know that's how i do it and ah, you can add some text it fills it with these what the backgrounds you see like the the black border this you can stuff do, here yeah yeah you can do like a, if you scroll to uh, the top like an orange border and like the text you can all do that in that app ah what and is it, it called typefully and you also have tweet hunter uh, tweet hunter i know typefully yeah. like this yeah yeah typefully interesting i'll keep that open this is very way. smooth way to write the threads and then tweet hunter is great for those reply giveaways you can have that you have to auto dm there dope but dope. tweet uh, typefully is a great one to just write your threads really quickly like i do it on my phone they have an app and it's really is, good. is there because you said you're posting once a day is there a limit where you say I wouldn't post more than three times a day or anything like that? Or it, is it just quality? It gets quality? obnoxious at some point because especially, it depends, you know, what your brand is. Like some people, they just spam out a bunch of thoughts, but you have to understand that one, the more you talk, um, the less significant it gets. Mm -hmm. So like if there's a guy that speaks once every thousand years, like everyone's going <laughs> to be listening, right? When they speak of their thousand years, it's the same on Twitter. You kind of want to keep it to like one, perhaps one thread, one like um, personal connection. I yeah. don't like, like if you go to my profile um, and then scroll down, I, I do that uh, like yeah, up, 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 up. Um, like this, this post, like for example, it's like personal connection. Like, oh, yeah, thank you guys so much for the support. You know, it builds that ah. trust with, the, like, it builds this connection with an audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, that's what I mean. Got it, got it. Yeah, and that's what you want. You want this, like, you're personally speaking. Uh, to yeah, it's 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 one of the things that uh, I learned very early on in the in the YouTube world, especially as a talking head creator. <laughs> and I remember that was never say hey guys, always just say hey 
in terms of the viewer himself should almost feel like he's alone there with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That might not be as relevant with faceless channels, but if you have a if you have a personal brand, I never say, oh, hey, yeah. guys. It's always just a, hey, yeah. today you're going to learn about this. And I look at the camera, like, into the, the little lens as if I'm holding eye contact with someone. Yeah. You know, plus plus things like um, the post that I just had recently with, with my girlfriend in Hallstatt. It was, yeah. it was very similar. Uh, it was this one. Hey, you know, a little Hallstatt trip, 20 minutes from my home where in Austria is. Yeah, I did yeah, something yeah. similar in LinkedIn with a little bit more of a personal message of like, you know, being grateful about the year. And uh, yeah, that's, that's always super, super powerful. Yeah. Um, one thing that I really wanted to ask you about, we're going crazy here with thousands of different topics is, <laughs> you know, the 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 whole Sam, Sam Sulek, Sam Sulek kind of oh, YouTube shit. thingy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it seems to me like, so just for, just for context, so that's basically like a fitness guy with, with crazy physique. And he's basically breaking all the YouTube rules oh, yeah. by just posting these like uncut 30 minute vlogs every day where he's like winter bulking and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, for me as an observer, it's kind of something we touched upon earlier where we said, everybody's getting tired of these hyper polished, perfected retention rate, cut sound effects kind of videos. And there is a certain pendulum swinging back to people just saying, Hey, I just want to look at someone authentic, just like YouTube used to be in freaking 2011, 2012. But I'd love to hear your thought process on that. Yeah. So there's a lot of people who are screaming like, Oh, okay. It, it, this is the death of like, um, production content, right? Like yeah. we'll call the production content. So like, Oh, this is the death of Mr. Beast because you know, everyone's tired of his hyper, um, editing style. And you see, if you watch the recent Mr. Beast videos, you don't have to now. But we'll pull uh, them up. Yeah, yeah. The, it, the editing is slower. You, ah, no you way. You will definitely notice if you compare it to a year ago, and now the editing is much more personal. There's much more emotion in it, mm. and there's much. It's much slower. So this is the in, the hook is still fast, but you will see throughout the video there's more emotion, like him crying, and he lets characters build up. Oh, that's right. I saw that other one where he was where he you was see, burying he's... himself and shit like that, yeah, and he was yeah. also crying. Yeah, I was like, wow, I've never seen him that emotional. Yeah, like that's interesting. Like him struggling, and and they're still introducing like stakes. Um, like here, you see the the psychiatrist guy saying like, <laughs> oh, if he's in there for too long, he will lose his mind. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That, right. So that that will put the stakes there. But um, yeah, you will see YouTube slow down a little bit because yeah. um, the market will always tend to go somewhere where you know it's something unique. It mm. will go, you know, it can't go to the same place it already was, you know, yeah. market usually, market usually move. And you see the same thing now on YouTube. Um, it, it goes in waves. So now and that, and that is where Sam Silik fits in. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And then there's another crazy one, which is the wizard Liz. Oh, never heard of that. Uh, yeah. So this was, if she was a coach, she would make bank. Okay. She, if well, she what, was, what does this woman do? So she does like motivational, like, um, self-improvement for women. Oh, wow. All right. And she gets. Look at this. It's just this. It's so like that's just her talking for just 20 talking long. head. That's like classic 2015 RSD type yeah. content. This is and she's getting two, three million views. Wow. And and the look at the camera quality. She's ass. The it, what? Oh yeah, yeah. It's just her iPhone. Yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. And her microphone. I think I'm pretty sure the microphone is like those um, Apple uh, Jack <laughs> mic. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it, she goes on like this for 21 minutes. Yeah. She just rants. No cuts, no different locations, no nothing. No. Interesting. So that's a trend that you feel like the pendulum is swinging back to. Um, in some, so that's what I was getting back to. In some way, shape, or form, that's where we're going back to. But there will always be a place for, you know, hyper produced content. Yeah. There will always be a place for Mr. Beast. And there will always be, but what you will see is that everything will tend to slow down for a bit like in terms of you know the storytelling will be slower and more intimate yeah um and like yeah everything will look more organic like the thumbnails you will see slowly will look more organic like it's real yeah. life like it used to be that they would polish their face wide like i remember that so it's easier to read their facial expressions yeah. but now it's like trying to make it a little bit more realistic so before also uh, that was interesting as well mr beast had his mouth open yeah. Before on always thumbnails. If you go, you have um, Chucky's Chrome extension, like few stats installed, right? Wait, what? Slow down. Few stats. Slow down for the old fella. <laughs> so few stats is Mr. Beast, his Chrome extension. Okay. So what do I? What do you? So want if to you go to um, Mr. Beast's YouTube channel. Yeah. We are in this podcast. We're going like left and right. Between yeah. Hell yeah. Don't matter. So <laughs> and you go. go to videos. Yeah. 
and then you go to uh, like any older and like an old video, just go like scroll down a bit. Yeah, 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 go to the hotel one, up to the Dubai hotel one. The one versus, yeah, you go. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, press on it. And then uh, you see the Chrome extension under there? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you can see the different title and thumbnail. I'm not sure if the Chrome, this Chrome extension tracked the older thumbnails. It, yeah. Do I go to it, gallery it was, or what? No, you, you see the pen, the like the little green thing. Yeah. Ah, you can see the changes he made this. to the thumbnail. Oh, he changed it from mouth yeah. open to mouth closed. Yeah, you see? Aha! Uh -huh. You see? Oh my God. <laughs> this is the end. Um, it got him good results. So mouth closed is now getting better. He, clo <laughs> he changed every single thumbnail on his channel to mouth closed. <laughs> Because, I love because this. It came, uh, I love marketing. I love this is a a love letter to marketing. Shit like this, mouth closed converts better. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. I this love was, that. This was it. They were measuring what what did better. You can see the A B test. Um, they were doing an A B test. Yeah. And the mouth closed came across. They they think they, it came across more genuine. Yeah. So yeah, and that's yeah. why it, it converted better. So, Damn. and that's where kind of the shift we're seeing, like Mr. Beast, it's in smaller amounts, like a little bit slower editing, more emotion in the videos, but in like a macro scale, you will see these crazy channels going viral. Uh, wow. So they're just zooming in. Yeah. There's multiple AT, the like test two, like you see multiple, you Damn. see all the tests they do. Yeah, they yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, with the rocks and without the rocks. Oh yeah. They, you know how much he spends on thumbnails? Video? I don't know how much. How much? Okay, how much does Mr. Beast spend on thumbnails I per video? If I'm not wrong, I might miss miss say the number. It's like fifteen thousand or something, and twenty five thousand or per video thumbnail. Per thumbnail, per thumbnail, I think. Per thumbnail. Yeah, I think that's what it was. But, but he, he's testing here like thirty thumbnails. Yeah, so he yeah. pays fifteen k each time. More five k per thumbnail, something like that. Damn. And then, and then, then you yeah, usually make three different variations, so it's like fifteen k a thumbnail I th a per uh, video on thumbnails. Damn. All right. All right. All right. Well, that's crazy. Yeah. And see, as you can see, all the uh, all here, the mouth is all closed. But if you go to the older videos, you will see. Let's uh, have a look at an older one. Let's have the a Willy look. Wonka one. Sorry, Willy Wonka one. Where we're at. Uh, the it? one above it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a look at that. You know, he also increases posting. Like, he posts yeah, yeah, a yeah. lot nowadays. Yeah. He, the, 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 there's here, no here. maybe split tests here. At least the maybe the because it was older. Yeah, the, 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 the Chrome extension is pretty, um, it's pretty new. new yeah. So it, it uh, doesn't have a lot of scraped data. Yeah, yeah. So the, the data is not uh, um, very old. So uh, when it comes to these Chrome extensions and also the next left, it's all like how much data can you collect? Like we yeah, on yeah. Next Lab, we have a bigger database than most unicorn startups. What's a unicorn startup? A unicorn startup is a startup that's worth more than a billion dollars. Ah, yeah, no yeah. shit. All right. So because we're me, I'm learning all these fancy words here today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're scraping obviously all of YouTube, which is like a crazy massive site with a yeah. ton of data. So yeah, it's very difficult to uh, to get the data. It's very very difficult. It's it's a great and awesome game, man. Like yeah, I said, yeah. like. You know, f funny because like I come from the, I come from the the personal development and the dating stuff. I mean, that was 2013 when I started. You were like what 14 years old or something. Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. You know? <laughs> Crazy stuff. And um, and what I always liked about that is you can create an environment with someone that you're you know romantically interested in, mm -hmm. where it's just you and them, and uh, you know you show yourself from the best side, and you want to be authentic, you want to be funny, and all that. And then I got into marketing, you know, I started making more and more money and I kind of realized like this is just like being on a date with someone, but you're on a date with thousands of people yeah, at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. It's like that. And and it has such a science-y approach to that, which I thought is so freaking cool. I mean, again, like mouth open, mouth closed, like it's just my curiosity that I just find is so cool just to see yeah. tiny little details of like, oh, wow, this converts better. And and, and that's just fascinating as hell. Oh, yeah. Fascinating. It's just psychology on steroids. Oh, it is. It's like YouTube is everything is psychology. Yeah. It's like hyper optimized. It, it, it used to be hyped optimized. Now, obviously, we're going back to, the, you know, that more authentic thing. But yeah, there was a time where it, it's, it went crazy. Like they would analyze every second of a video to see where the drop offs were. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can go so crazy yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah. But I, th I think the move for 2024 is definitely that more authentic type of content, but mm. still being interesting. So I'm, I'm not saying make boring content, yeah. but make something that feels real. So 
there is there is like a fine line. Uh, the police booty cam is a great example, right? Because it's real scenarios. Yeah. Yet we kind of make it better than uh, like we kind of make it more. Uh, we paint over it a little bit, yeah, like make, yeah. touch it up a little bit. Yeah. It's not anymore that we make an entire fantasy world, mm. but we just touch it up a little bit, make it a bit more interesting. And that that's a strategy for going into 2024. Beautiful. How does, because you said tra- strategy about 2024, how does AI feed into that? Um, I mean, we're using AI for things like thumbnails. We're using AI for things like predicting things. Is there a space for completely AI generated videos? No, I don't think that will be accepted anytime soon. I think there will be, I think it's quite wild west out there right now. I think there's going to be some massive backlash coming in. Um, I think YouTube. What, what kind of backlash are we talking about? Well, yeah, there's a few discussion going or discussions going around on what data does the AI get trained. Um, that's first of all, and then so for example, they're stealing from like uh, like the artists. I'm angry because they're yeah. stealing from artists and they're stealing. Well, they, they probably scammed your Insta- uh, scammed your Instagram page, right? Very likely. Yeah. yeah, and then another thing which is interesting, and that's a not like really quick sidetrack strategy. If you can try and get your um, website indexed, right, um, by ChatGDP or whatever, when someone asks, "Oh, who is the best coach that coach coaches?" Oh. It will show up next door now. Yeah. <sighs> If you're able to do that, that's go to that's that's a strategy for if, if you're do, playing that game, you you will be good three four years from now. It's basically like Google SEO, but in for 2024. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And the crazy thing is though, just to chime in, just to get sidetracked on your sidetrack, <laughs> is like when I go on Google and I SEO that it has a different aspect to it because I see not just the first entry but i see the second the third the fourth and so on and so mm-hmm. forth and it has a little bit more of an objective kind of uh, a flair to it but when chat tells me like a person the best coach yeah. is max torno it it's it just the it ch- gives me much more it, it seems to me like it's much truer it eliminates the choosing you have to exactly yeah, yeah. and that and that is yeah yeah that if you if someone says like Oh yeah, how do I, like for example, another thing would be, like obviously they link, when you ask a question now, they browse with Bing, right? And they link articles and stuff. If you have like a question, right? You ask like, uh, what's the best way to find YouTube niches? And the first one is, oh yeah, use Next Lab. That's like, for example, when you ask ChatGDP now, uh, what's the best SEO tool? It will show up Shenbrush, for example. Okay. You know how much leads they will probably get <laughs> from, from people asking that? Like, how do I improve my SEO? And then there were a bunch of articles from Shenbrush and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, that that's going to be the search engine of the future. Obviously Damn. they're all coining in on that. So not a lot of people know this, but it is very, very valuable, yeah. I mean, also, I've also already seen the data on um, younger people under 20. They don't even Google stuff anymore. They search on TikTok and YouTube directly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's really crazy, too. So there, there's so much fast-moving stuff going on. So what do you think is going to happen with AI? What, what do you, how do you see the adaptability in the next few months to years where we can so use it? So it depends on, uh, the, really depends on what time scale we're talking. Like in months, I say the people who use AI as a tool will beat the people who 100% use AI, yeah. right? So if you use AI as a tool in the coming months, then that's going to be the winning strategy. But I think, sadly, in the long run, things will get 100% AI. I would not be surprised. Um, if unless we get limited by computing power, that's gonna be mm. like I have a friend working at Microsoft and they they are going crazy building these data centers. Yeah, right? yeah, like crazy. So unless we get limited by computer power, it's gonna get to a stage where there most likely will be a hundred percent AI generated companies. Like <laughs> we're talking, let's go. We're talking like an AI marketing department and like uh, AI finance department. Some AI setting up the LLC. Like uh, that kind of stuff. And it's yeah. the same on YouTube. There's a big discussion going on right now. And, and I've talked to, there's this creator called Quabblecop uh, on there. And he's, he's building like, he turned his channel into an AI. Um, like he AI cloned himself. Oh, on, wow. On YouTube. And then. Wait, who's this guy? Let's look at that guy. Yeah, Quabblecop. Uh, okay, you got to spell that for me, for the old man. Um, uh, K-W-E-B. Yeah, there it's there. Oh, Quabblecop. Okay. Yeah. What a name, this guy. So the, he made himself. Yeah, AI. Yeah, yeah. It's a long like there's a, been a bunch of drama around it. But anyway, it's quite it's still quite interesting. It's this channel basically. This channel yeah. is, but that's still him. Yeah, this is still him. But if you look at the um, go to videos, and then go down a little bit, like D, no, a little bit more. 
these are AI generated. These thumbnails are also AI generated. Everything here is AI generated. So this of him talking in the top left is AI? I is AI. Yeah. This AI. Oh, damn. Okay. I see it. It yeah. looks weird. Yeah, it looks strange. But it, it, but it still gets views. Yeah, no. His channel is dead now. But still, it's oh, yeah, an interesting... 15k views. Yeah, okay. Like for 15 million subscribers. Yeah, yeah. 15k <laughs> is not good. So it died because he used AI? Or it died nah, before? It, or? it was not good before that even. But I, it's for him now a passion project, I think, also. But... Um, but so, okay, okay. Hold on. So you got to explain this to the, to, to the old guy. So... How did he create this with AI? So, just just the animation, or did he just say make a video about Among Us? No, no, no. So um, how this works specifically is there's like background. Someone else sits in office recording background footage, and yeah. then he based uh, and then he generates. Um, I think it's done by a voice actor. Don't get me wrong. Mm. I, he says it's not, but I, I'm like 50 50 percent sure it's a stylized voice. So you sometimes you have a hundred percent generated voice. Yeah. And then you have stylized voices, which like it's me talking, and then all of a sudden I sound like Drake. Ah, okay, yeah, right? okay, okay. Yeah, um, so that sounds better than the hundred percent AI generated voices because yeah. the AI has something to go off. Yeah. Um, so I think that's what he's doing, but he might not anymore. Like, um, and then we see it generates the AI. So that that, per, like him, is just hundred percent AI. It's crazy generated. how the facial expressions change. For yeah. people, for people only listening, his eyebrows go frowny. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. he's laughing. That's great. It was creepy before, though. You have to go back a little bit more. Yeah, it gets better with every iteration. That's the crazy. You scroll stuff. down a bit. It, it looks super weird before. This one here, here, this first video. This one here. Yeah. I mean, that is. <laughs> that is. Uh, a bit yeah, crazy. that is like a. It's like it looks like a character from The Sims. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, it gets a lot better uh, over time, obviously. But it I looks look so cringe. <laughs> it looks. I'm gonna murder you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, damn. Yep. All right, so ha, it's 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 scary, but also kind of awesome. And uh, I'm not worried at all about like AI is gonna take away everybody's jobs. You look, you know. Uber didn't take everybody's jobs away. No. Uber made it more difficult for grumpy cab drivers to make, you know, to make a living. They just, you know, so they had to kind of learn how to not be a dick anymore because now they're getting reviews on, on Uber. So I think it's just like you got to evolve with it or die. Yeah, yeah. People who don't use AI will get replaced by people who use AI. It's yeah, simple. Exactly. It's like we're quite far away from like um, like AI replace, completely replacing humans. If it does happen, I think it will be in five years or so, four mm -hmm. or five years. Mm -hmm. If I follow the news like that, I think ChatGDP made a similar, like the OpenAI, the company, yeah. made a similar prediction. Like you, like uh, AI will be able to compete with humans in five years. So you still have time to get rich. So if you want to get rich, Let's do, it. <laughs> do it now. Because <laughs> yeah, it's the same for YouTube. Because what happens uh, sooner or later, depending on if legislation is going to, be, yeah, uh, before and against it, obviously. But if they allow it, there will be like three, four guys sitting at the top running tens of thousands of YouTube channels, yeah. just all AI generated. Yeah, it's uh, it's again there, like it's gonna move to the top guys, and it will be more and more difficult. But in every industry, yeah, exactly. Like yeah. If, if if you're coming into half-ass things, it, no matter where you are, no matter how early or late you are on a trend, if you're coming into half-ass things, it's not gonna work. The but the best long-term strategy is always going to be commit to it. Mm -hmm. Give it your best. Go for over delivering. Um, give, 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 give. Value, value, value. Be authentic. Be yourself. And that really is the only way to make it happen in the long run. If you're just coming in with like, how much can get, a, how much can I get away with? That's that's the attitude of a 14 year old or a 15 year old. But that should not be the attitude of someone who actually wants to uh, make a living for themselves, ideally for the rest of their lives. Yeah, I think. To be honest, the most important, and, and I say this to a lot of my entrepreneur friends I meet. And that don't do YouTube, right? I think the most important thing you got to understand, and, and, and you understand that really nicely, um, is that we we live in an attention economy, mm -hmm. I call it. Like, mm -hmm. the money goes where the eyeballs yeah. it goes, right? So to learn a skill like writing good threads or making a good YouTube video just extends past just a YouTube video because you can apply it to everything. You can apply it to Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. It's like a skill you... like. Knowing how to grow on social media as a skill, you need the master in 2024. If I would say invest in anything, invest in learning how to grow on social media, because that's the only way to future proof yourself. Like someone could have the worst coaching program, right? And a million followers and still make crazy <laughs> amounts of money. Yep. So um, yeah, that's the move. And then another thing I would say is that make 
a product that's difficult to copy, especially in a saturating, like a market that's saturating. Like I would say, let's say you're a coach that does guitar coaching. I'm just saying something, right? Yeah. You make like some special SaaS tool and you make it very exclusive, like a special SaaS tool that you get with the coaching that helps you get better at guitar playing or something. Yeah. Something and it recognizes the it, like you playing guitar and it like trains you even better, right? Something like that. So Someone's we, making notes right now. Listen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you can do it in every industry and 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 SaaS uh, is getting easier and easier to build. As yeah. Well, cause it's because of AI. Yeah, and no code SaaS um, is yeah. is a big thing. And the nice part is you can exit. Um, something out of your coaching business. Mm. So first you popular, uh, you make it popular with your coaching business and then you sell it eventually. Mm. Like you can just separate those two. Yeah. Like I can sell in two, three years when I turn next left into a subscription based model again, I can sell it for five times the annual revenue. Hell right? yeah. yeah. So I, I would say, yeah, also try to think of the exit money. I think that's mm. where a lot of people leave a ton of money on the table. They also always think like, or how can I make as much money now? Especially, exactly. but I'm like, okay, how, how can I make as much money on my exit? When I exit the game, how much can I get from my companies? And that's really what I'm constantly thinking about. Whoo. Yep. Amen to that, my man. Um, I think we're going to slowly wrap things up. What's, what's next for you personally and business wise? Um, for me, uh, personally, um, I'm gonna probably buy a home this year, my first home. I always rent it, like everything on Airbnb. Mm. I, I, I have spent ungodly amounts of money. Airbnb, Airbnb. is where it's at. Bro, they are, I'm probably their favorite. <laughs> 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 I'm favorite. Like I've been, for the last three years, I've been just living out of Airbnbs. Yeah, same. So, um, but like buying, like getting proper, like or just proper life, like not being all over the place because I'm constantly like everywhere. Yeah. Um. So settling down a little bit. What country? It's somewhere in Asia, I think. I'm mm. not sure what. Um. I like I go to Bali quite a lot, but it's getting too touristic. <laughs> like, so many hippies yep. and things. It's too much now. So probably somewhere else. So that's personal life, and then for business wise, it's um actually simplifying my offers. So. That's a big thing I learned. Um, the tool, you, you think, like, if you make a product, right, you think, oh, this is super easy to understand. And then you look at the data, you look at how people are mm. using it. I'm like, they don't understand how to use it. <laughs> <Yeah, Fuck. yeah. laughs> Shit, I'm going to make, so I'm going to simplify it. And then you can start scaling it to a more wider audience, right? Mm. Like, if you have, a, for example, you have a coaching offer or whatever, like, if you, you have a course, try to make it more simple because yeah. it will make you more money. Exactly. Like you would think like, oh, I'm going to spew like Add crazy advanced to it. Yeah, yeah. And people Actually, don't care. the more basic stuff, that's where the real money is made. Like there's a Dutch girl. Um, uh, she also has a YouTube automation course and her course is quite like, like fundamental level, like mm -hmm. very, yeah. very basic. But she makes crazy amounts of money. Yeah. Like, and it's always the people who sell the most basic course, courses that make the most amount of money because it can cater to everyone. Yeah. Right. And that's what we're doing with Next Step now because it's too advanced for mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. So that's the next step uh, in business. And then for YouTube, for my YouTube career, it's um, doing very difficult channels. So mm -hmm. 3D animations. Um, we're even, oh, I, I can show you something. All right, let's have a look. Um, we're building entire games for a, one YouTube video. Like not oh, YouTube. Oh, damn. Yeah, so it's, um, you, you fir first I'll show you what I'm modeling after. Search up, I made a game, but. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's like, um, like these people, they code a game, like in the wow. video. They build an entire game in the video. Oh. So these are, not, not, just go to um, the filters and uh, press most uh, viewed. All right, so this is getting interesting now. So if you count, and then you have to scroll down a little bit, and you'll and you'll see some of the here. Yeah, so I um a little bit, so adding a giant well, crap the, <laughs> game. So Netflix. So he makes <laughs> yeah he makes the video against all, but you, uh, there's some better examples if you scroll down a little bit more. Uh, I made a zero player video game, for example, 10, <laughs> 10 million views. Like these videos get crazy views. So this is just people coding a game or what? Yeah. So actually we're, uh, I'll show you, um, I'll show you some things. Um, I can't show it publicly, but we're making entire, like, um, a character behind the channel. And then oh. the goal is to, um, sell a course and we, um, funnel people who watch the channel into like playing the game on their mobile phone. Oh, so wow. we make a game on the video and then we say, oh, you can download it on the PlayStation. Uh -huh. And then you can get Let's also go. ad revenue 
from in-game from purchases. the viewers and it feeds into each other exactly and nice. it keeps going and if a, if it's a hit game you can um here so we're making like characters for the uh, for the game all right okay yeah, so characters cool. and um and yes we have a coder that creates the entire game and stuff like that so eventually what it should be is that it should be a brand where you know we show people how we make a game and then we sell it we sell them into a uh, course how to code it yeah game. right and then Whew. all of a sudden if you get 20 million views right and yeah. 0.01 percent convert yeah that's still like a million bucks yeah that's so th that's kind of the skill we're operating towards now this year shaka laka yeah. well uh it's been a extremely valuable uh, podcast episode here with you thank you for being here noah i wish you all the best wish you i mean you're gonna crush anyways <laughs> really regardless of what people wish you uh people can find you on twitter at noah morris with a z yep yeah i wish s was available but it's not <laughs> all right all right <laughs> and uh yeah dude let's let's keep pushing let's keep crushing thank you very much man crazy thank you for having me on cheers gg gg